Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we are going to look at finding the least common denominator or just finding a common denominator, first of all. And this is needful when students are adding or subtracting unlike fractions. And the basic idea, the basic principle is that the common denominator when we're adding fractions, we need to find a common denominator and it has to be a multiple of each of the denominators. So this new word, possibly new word, multiple, is what might throw students off and what they need to learn. A multiple of a certain number is where you multiply that number by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. It's basically the multiplication table of that number. So the multiples of 7 are the 7 and 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, etc. It's the multiplication table of 7. So we could reword this rule that the common denominator has to be in the multiplication tables of each denominator. And so, armed with that knowledge, students can then go finding the common denominator when they are adding unlike fractions. For example, if we have these two fractions to add, 1 fifth and 2 thirds, look at the denominators, 5 and 3. Think of the multiplication table of 5 and of 3 and find a number that's in both of those tables. For example, like this. Multiplication table of 5 goes like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Those are multiples of 5. And which one of those numbers, if any, but there will be one number at least, is also in the multiplication table of 3. And so that's how we will find 15. 15 is also, it happens to be 5 times 3. And that's one quick way to always find a common denominator, is to multiply the denominators. You'll always get a common multiple that will work, a common denominator. Here's another example, 4 and 12. See, we could go 4 times 12, 48, right? And 48 is in the multiplication table of 12, and it's in the multiplication table of 4. But we can also, in this case, find a smaller number. We can look at the multiples of 12, or the multiplication table of 12, and see if any of those are also in the table of 4. You start out with 12, 24, 36, 48. And the first number, 12 itself, is in the multiplication table of 4. So 12 itself is, could be used as a common denominator. And since it is smaller, it will be easier to work with. 48 is not wrong, it will also work. And soon we will actually look at the difference of these two possible denominators to use. But let's go on here first. If our denominators are 6 and 9, then what would be the common denominator? I can go 6 times 9 equals 54. Or I can look at the multiples of 6 and think if any of the smaller multiples of 6 are also multiples of 9. So 6, 12, no 12 is not in the table of 9. 18, oh 18 is in the table of 9. Okay, 18 also will work and it's more. 8 and 7. 8 times 7 is 56. Would there be any smaller ones? Then you can check 8, 16, 24, 32. No, none of those are in the table of 7. 40 is not, 48 is not, 56 is the first one. Okay, so 56. Now, let's, look, let's add these two fractions using two different denominators and see what the difference is. If I use 48 as a denominator, 48, 48 here. Okay, 4 goes to 48 12 times, so I have to go 1 times 12, 12. 12 goes to 48 4 times, so I have to go 7 times 4 here, 28. Oh, I'm sorry, 28. 28. And the principle to use here is to use equivalent fractions. And um, now we add 12 plus 28 equals 40. 40 over 48. Now this fraction simplifies. If you've studied simplifying fractions, these, both num these numbers are both divisible by 8, so I can go 40 divided by 8, and 48 divided by 8. Okay. Now let's add using the other common denominator, 12. 7 twelfths, of course, doesn't change. And here, 4 goes to 12 3 times, so I go 1 times 3, 
3. And I get 10 over 12. This also can be simplified because both of these are even numbers, divisible by 2. So I can divide 10 by 2 and 6, I mean 12 by 2 and get 6. So the final answer is the same, right? As we expected. It doesn't matter, it doesn't make any change in the final answer, whichever one you use of those. And it, what difference it makes is that you will have bigger numbers to deal with here in the numerators and denominators, and your simplifying will be maybe a little bit more difficult in the end. Now, most school books also teach the method for finding the least common denominator when they're studying fraction math. Now, I personally feel that that is not super needful for students to learn at first. They will get by, in fifth grade, they will definitely get by with just thinking of the multiplication tables without um, learning this big word, least common denominator, okay? Because in fifth grade, for example, the numbers are usually fairly small that are used for denominators. But then when we get to bigger denominators, at some point they will probably have this in their math books, and so it's needful to learn this too. The least common denominator is the least common multiple of the denominators. We basically already found it here, 18, 12, you know, using this method. But I want to now explain it in more detail. If we have these two fractions to add, and we want to use the least common denominator when we're adding, then we need to find the least common multiple of these two numbers. And let's make a list of multiples. List of multiples of 40, list of multiples of 32, and then find some common numbers in them, and then find the least of them, okay? Now, multiples of 40 would be 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240, 280. Okay, well, let's start writing the list of multiples of 32. 32, 64, 96, uh, 128 and 160. Oh, okay. See? Now we found a common multiple, and that is also the least common multiple because before that there were no numbers that were the same. So 160 is going to be our least common denominator. Now, 40 goes to 160 four times. So I've got four times one here. 32 goes to 160. Well, I can count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It was the fifth multiple of 32, so it goes five times. And therefore, I go this time number times 5. And so my answer is 29 over 160. And that doesn't simplify because 29 is prime. Let's look at another example. I have my denominators 12 and 14 here. Multiples of 12 would be 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 96. Yeah, I don't know at this point how far I need to go. Let's start with 14. 14, 28, 42, 56, and uh, 70, 84, oh, okay, 84, here we go. And then we'll write in the addition using the denominator 84. Now 12 goes to 84. I can count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. So 7 times 5, 35. And 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 14 is 84, so therefore 6 times 11 also, 66. And now add, we get 101 over 84. Lastly, I again want to compare if we used, instead of going through this trouble of finding the least common multiple to use as a least common denominator, what if we used 168 as a common denominator. And that is found just by multiplying these two denominators. It's pretty simple. 
same numbers, but we use 168 as uh, as the common denominator. And here, there's a, a little shortcut you can take. Since you multiply multiply the tail 12 times 14 to get 168, then to get this number here, you go 5 times 14, uh, which is 70. And then to get this number here, you go 11 times 12, 132. And then adding, we get 202 over 168. And now we have the trouble of simplifying. Both of, the num both of these numbers are even numbers, so I will first simplify by 2. Divide both by 2 to get 101 over 84. And that doesn't simplify any further. So I got the same answer. And I, I personally feel this is actually less work than this. But it's your pick.